strict Islam. The third thing that I wanted to mention <coughs> with regards to this khutbah today is that our deen al-Islam is not an irrational, it is not an irrational nor an anti-modern nor an archaic or backward religion. In fact, the deen of Islam is the future for humanity. It is the future to solve all of the problems that our society faces. You know, I've heard so many times when I speak to the non-Muslims on a regular basis, non-Muslim or not yet Muslim, we should use that term in fact. I've heard so many times where they say, whether you see it in the media or whether you speak to people, they will say, Islam is a primitive religion. It was for them days. It's an old-fashioned religion. It's backward. I mean, all you've got to do is look at the Muslim countries. Look how backward they are. How can Islam be for the future? How can Islam solve our problems here? And my reply is it's not Islam's fault that the Muslims are in the way that they are. It's not Islam's fault that the Muslim countries are backward and anti-modern. Not all Muslim countries of course. But rather it's the Muslims fault. There was a non-Muslim who was addressing an audience in a conference once. And the audience was predominantly Muslim. And he was an Orientalist. And he was, in his speech he was talking about the relationship between Islam and the West. And he was a non-Muslim, remember. And he was highlighting, he was urging the Muslims. He was saying, where are you? Look at your history. You people were leading this world in every aspect. Whether it be in science, or technology, or medicine, or whatever it might have been, your countries were the most advanced countries. And he was asking the Muslims in the audience, where are you today? He said, forget about your worldly ambitions. You guys don't even know your religious duties. And this was a non-Muslim addressing the audience who was an Orientalist. So the point I'm making is, those people who say that Islam does not fit in the modern era, or Islam needs to be changed to fit into the modern era, the reply to them is that they are wrong. They need to go and study their history. You need to go and study your history. All we've got to do is go look back at Muslim Spain. It wasn't that long ago when we were the leaders in everything. And in fact, the West today, much of what they take from, in, they're advanced in their science and technology, but their fundamentals are from where? Where did they take their science and technology from? They took it from us. They took it from us, the Muslims. How did we end up so backward and so behind? How did they overtake us? The reality is, well, there's a number of reasons why, but the reality is, the first one, I believe, that the majority of us left our deen. We moved away from our deen and making that our priority. We left submitting to the will of Allah. We left our submission and surrender. We started chasing this dunya and trying to be apologetic and appeasing the non-Muslims and trying to be like them rather than them trying to be like us. So we need to address ourselves and check ourselves because we are the example for the non-Muslim. But Islam is not an irrational religion. Islam is very much a logical religion. Islam is, um, is, is for human progress. It's for 
taking things forward and is not a backward religion as some people might have you believe but we also believe with that comes and our religion is based upon revelation from the creator of human beings that we have an infallible source of guidance there is no error in that it is not man-made and is not done by trial and error rather we have very clear guidance but only if we return back to it properly the fourth point that I want to mention today is that our religion, our Islam is not an intolerant work it is not an intolerant work in fact quite the opposite Islam is about living and let live Islam is about bringing about peace in society it's about bringing about peace in society and we do not accept coercion and aggression rather Islam is about bringing that positive influence in society that makes a society a better place and and our history testifies to that because it's the essence of Islam in reality is about justice justice so one of our priorities as Muslims is to be just and what does that mean? that means giving everybody their rights in their right place starting with who? giving the rights to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost ensuring worship to him alone without any partner without any partner establishing his right first and once you've corrected that then everything else will fall into place naturally once you start worshipping other than Allah and I don't mean just by idol worship or grave worship I also mean by worshipping yourselves or worshipping money or materialism and then everything else will fall into place inshallah and giving everybody their rights your parents your families your neighbors your friends your work colleagues everyone will get their rights accordingly and history testifies to this that this deen of Islam is not an intolerant deen because the basic principle of this religion and if we, if we learn this principle if we learn this principle I am sure that we as Muslims can bring about this positive change in society we will be motivated to do it and the principle is that Islam is not about just the rights of the individual no rather Islam is about safeguarding the whole of society as well as the, the rights of the individual so it's not just about the self we live in a society where it's about individualism it's about me myself and I doesn't matter about my neighbor people don't even care about their own mothers in this society it's about themselves it's become a very selfish society so what does Islam come to do? to eradicate that so these are some short reminders about how we as Muslims need to remember Allah need to remember the guidance of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I need to remember as believers what our responsibilities are living in this society. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi wa shadu wa la ilaha ant wa sakratu wa nahi. Inna alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam. على رسول الله 
Brothers and sisters in Islam, I just gave you some short reminders about the responsibilities that we have as Muslims living in this society and a few reminders and clarifications along the way about what we should be believing as Muslims. The last sort of conclusion to this khutbah that I wanted to highlight was a few more points about some of the practical things that we can do as Muslims living here in this society. And the first one is very simple and clear. Live Islam. Live Islam. Make Islam your priority in life. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, and don't be embarrassed to show your 